So I'll start by defining something called a smooth function. Okay. So suppose uh, suppose we have a curve. Um, the, the curve is expressed as the function y equal f of x, okay? Uh, then we're going to say that f of x is what we call a smooth function. Let me underline the word smooth. If f prime of x is continuous. Okay, so this is the definition of a smooth function. Uh, remember, in order for a function uh, to be differential, it has to be continuous. Uh, but it doesn't doesn't to say that if a function is continuous, it's differentiable. Um, an example is the absolute value, which is uh, continuous, but when we are looking at the vertex of the absolute value, then this is what we call a corner, and the derivative does not exist. So the the absolute value is an example of a, of a function that is continuous but not differentiable. Now, when we are talking about the smooth function, we we ask not that the function will be differentiable; it's differentiable, but also that the derivative, its derivative itself, is continuous. For example, if we have some kind of a, a vertical or a spike in the function, then the derivative goes to infinity, and therefore it's discontinuous at this point. Um, or you have the natural log of x in, in the derivative, and again the natural log of x, of course, if the interval is something, let's say, from zero, negative 1 to, to infinity, then for all the negative values, uh, the derivative does not exist, so it's not continuous. So that won't be a smooth function. Why do we need a smooth function? Because uh, what we learned last time, uh, how to calculate the arc length, it's actually a theorem. And one of the conditions uh, that we uh, allow us to calculate the arc length is that the function whose curve or whose arc we calculate, the, the length of of, uh, of its arc is calculate has to be smooth. There is no sudden change or the derivative doesn't go to infinity, the derivative exists over this interval. So now let's write the arc length theorem. And this is basically a recap of what we did last time. So here's the arc length theorem. And if you look at the notes from last class, well, when we derive this uh, formula or the arc length uh, integral, this was, in a sense, the proof of this theory. So we're going to say that suppose f of x is a smooth function. on the interval, uh, on the relevant interval, which will be the closed interval a, b, like so, then uh, we're going to say that the arc length from x equals a to x equals b is given by And here we have, well, the symbol for the arc length is L, and it will be the integral from A to B of the square root of 1 plus F prime of X squared, like so, dx. Or we can write it, F prime is the Y dx, so another way to write it is the integral from A to B of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. 
One quick observation at this point is if you look at the integrand, it's the square root of something plus something else. Okay. Now, if the derivative, if the function is smooth, then f prime or the y dx uh, is is continuous. That's the definition of the smooth of a smooth function. Um, now, smooth function allow us for the derivative to equal zero. Okay, so what happens if the derivative equals zero? If you think about it, so now we have the square root of one, and the integral L will be simply the integral of the x. In other words, L equal x, evaluated from A to B. Which makes sense if you think about it, because if you think about it, uh, if, if uh, the derivative equals zero, then we are looking at a line segment that is horizontal, or horizontal line segment from A to B. So L equal X from A to B in this case, right? And so this is the case where F prime of X equals zero. So it does make sense. On the other hand, <clears throat> if on the integral, interval, the same interval A to B, you have a function that is smooth. In other words, the derivative exists, but let's say uh, F prime is not equal to zero. So it can be either positive or negative and such, but you can see that the length of the arc, the arc length, will be longer than the segment, the length of the segment AB. Okay? So that's why it's one plus something else. And that something else is the square of the derivative. Another comment here. What happens if this is the case where y equal f of x? Okay? Now, what happens if instead of y equal f of x, we have another curve such as x equal g of y? Okay? So, let's say, suppose we have a curve x equal g of y. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, the R and, and Y uh, on an interval goes C to D. In other words, Y go from C to D. So what is the arc length in this case? Then the arc length, instead of going uh, with F prime of X, then L, the theorem, going to read, it will be the integral from C to D of the square root of 1 plus, and instead of F prime, we're going to have G prime squared, G prime of Y squared. And the uh, variable of integration will be dy, okay? And we can write it also as the integral from A to B of the square root of 1 plus, and instead of g prime, do you uh, do you know how to write g prime of y using Leibniz notation d d over d dx dy? Very good. Because we take the function is x equal uh, g of y, so the argument of the function or the input of the function is y, the output is x, so we'll have dx dy squared, and the variable of integration will be dy. So this is another form. Oh, will that be the variable of c to d? The c to d, yes. In the morning, I stay with a, b, and then I said, okay, we use a, b when y was equal to f of x, how about we'll use CD when X equal to G of Y? All right? But this is really the boundaries of the, of the integration. So this is pretty much to recap a little bit of uh, formal definitions and so on and the theorem. Again, the proof was given before, so I'm, I'm skip that. I'll skip the proof.